Hello, everybody. Bloody war has continued in Ukraine for almost four months. The world hasn't seen such a horrible war since 1945. Ukraine is bravely fighting for the future, its democratic choice and survival as a nation. War is always about pain, damage and losses. However, war is also a time for quick decisions, breakthrough tech and the most creative solutions. For Ukraine and the whole world, everything changed on February 24, dividing our life into three parts. What we're doing before the war, the war time, what we are doing now, and after our victory, what future we are going to build. Before the war, we created the Ministry of Digital Transformation in September 2019. The digital state is an important part of the President Zelensky program. We have a big ambitious mission to make Ukraine the most convenient country in the field of public services. And I believe we have achieved some great results. We have one of the best government apps in the world, DIA. Here you can store digital documents, pay taxes, donate to the army and even watch TV. Over the past two years, our team has launched 12 digital documents in the FDA, driver license, student card, vehicles registration, and insurance. And the most important of them is a digital passport of the citizen of Ukraine that has the same legal power as the paper one. This way, we became the first country in the world to legalize electronic passport. Two years ago, we created a digital passport in a smartphone a document one should not leave at home. Ukraine is the first country in the world to equate a digital passport with a physical one. Having a digital passport in DIA, Ukrainians can open bank accounts, receive money transfers, pick up postal packages, board trains and planes within Ukraine, etc. Using digital passport in DIA is secure and reliable. You can check its validity with the help of a QR code in the application. This feature is available for any DIA user. We got rid of endless paper trail, certified by handwritten signatures. In two simple clicks, Ukrainians are able to use certified copies of their important documents in institutions and even when checking into a hotel. The documents are stored in PDF format and have a date and notice from organization that had received it. DIA. Simple. Invisible. Humane. A very important part of digital country is a digital signature. That is why we have launched DS Signature. It's a revolutionary service. You can create the electronic signature right in your smartphone without attending office state or private offices. How it works? We use bank ID for authorization in DIA. And when you are creating the DIA signature, you face biometrics are matched with the biometrics of the demographic register in real time. It's amazing. 8 million of Ukrainians have already used it. DIA Digital Signature is a secure signature on your smartphone. To generate a DIA Digital Signature, simply open DIA application and click on DIA Digital Signature menu and blink your eyes. The image of your face is then verified with the photo in the database. Using such digital signature, people are able to sign contracts and open bank accounts online. The application is storing all signing history. Your digital signature is simply in your pocket. During COVID-19 crisis, we learned how to make target payments into virtual bank accounts of Ukrainians in just a few clicks. They automatically recognized whether an applicant suited the requirements of vaccination or not to make a decision about the payment. This money could only be used for purchasing particular kinds of goods and services, and thus we managed to recreate the e-money using regular digital instruments. It's revolutionary for target social payments. E-Aid, government payments in DIA app.
The Ministry of Digital Transformation has completely changed the approach to social assistance. People were able to send in their applications in a few clicks on DIA app. Their information was taken from databases and the system determined their eligibility for these services. As a result, they only needed to verify their data on DIA and choose the account. Payments were released on special cards. This was the largest online social service in the history of Ukraine. We managed to simplify and speed up the process for people as much as possible. This service is expanding. When the war began, it started being available to Ukrainians who had to move away from hostile territories. In the future, all social assistance Ukrainians will receive through e-aid. All this time we have been transforming our economy. We have launched a special law and tax regime for tech companies Dia City. It's the best tax conditions for IT companies in Europe. As of now, we have the following achievements. 255 residents in Dia City since its launch in the beginning of February. So 20,000 of people work within the Dia City framework. Ukrainian budget has already received 1.3 billion grivnas of taxes from resident companies. In addition to create favorable tax conditions, Ukraine has legalized virtual assets and crypto exchanges. In 2020, we launched the Ukrainian Startup Fund, which became the biggest angel venture fund in Ukraine. Space. It can be so unbearably little and so terrifyingly vast, you get goosebumps. Usually it is a good sign. It means room for growth. IT business in Ukraine needs space to keep developing and operating. So we created Dia City, an exclusive economical and legal outlet for IT. Here you will not find outdated schemes, gray areas, constant battles between what is legal and profitable. <laughs> there is breathing space. Legal tools are the same for London and Venezia, and intellectual property is protected by law. People are able to control their contracts and receive social guarantees. Law enforcement structures are incapable of acting in their sole interests. Here, taxes are not pressing and you get headroom for reinvestments, new Ukrainian businesses, and large international companies. This is space for Sergei, Volodymyr, Anya, Nazar, and this guy. Join in. And then the war started. For the first time in history, there is a cybersecurity, digital and informational war, as well as a war in the fields. For the last two and a half years, we have been creating the digital country, the products and approaches of which we could adapt for leading the digital war. Let's see what we managed to do in the field of the government services during the war. As a result of the war, almost 11 million Ukrainians fled their homes. 7 million of them are internally displaced. It takes a minute for Ukrainians to apply for an IDP status certificate in DIA. Ukrainians can also submit an application for IDP assistance in DIA app as well. Ukrainian government sending payments to help our people during three months. The Russian military have destroyed tens of thousands of homes of civil people. Damaged property feature was created to track damages as accurately as possible. Ukrainians are able to report complete or partial damage to their private homes and residential properties. When Ukrainians had to be evacuated from hotspots, they had left behind everything they had earned throughout their lives. We updated e-aid service. There is a one-time financial assistance from the government to evacuated people. On the first day of this feature, we have received 1 million applications. When the Russian army attacked Ukraine, it destroyed a number of TV towers. In order to provide Ukrainians with uninterrupted access to information, DIA TV and DIA radio were created in the DIA app. Using this feature, the population follows all the news and even had watched Eurovision recently. The Bayraktar drone became a symbol of Ukrainian resistance. The game e Bayraktar was created in DIA to lighten the mood of the Ukrainians. Everyone can experience being an operator of the legendary drone. 
modern war, modern solutions. DIA users contribute to Ukrainian victory by sharing civil intelligence data. Everyone who sees the movements of Russian army or military hardware could take the photos of it and send it to us using his special chatbot Evorov. From the first days of the invasion, Ukraine showed mastery on the digital front. Team at Ministry of Digital Transformation created a chatbot, Yevrog, e enemy in the Telegram Messenger. With this chatbot, Ukrainians can report the movement of occupants and collaborators and capture the location of enemy equipment with just a few clicks. The main difference from all other existing bots is authorization through DIA app. Only citizens of Ukraine are able to use the bot. Support service at DIA processes applications and submits them to the headquarters of armed forces of Ukraine. Brave Ukrainians help Ukrainian military to destroy entire troops of occupants. Chatbot has become a digital weapon of every Ukrainian in occupied territories. The opportunity to stay connected in wartime is an important thing and even the need for survival. In the very first day of war, we asked Elon Musk to help us. More than 12,000 Starlinks have arrived in Ukraine. We have been using them for support and restoration of the critical infrastructure. Thousands of bombs have destroyed internet cables and cut off Ukrainians from access to information and each other. However, internet connection became faster and more reliable. Ukraine has received more than 10,000 Starlink stations, thanks to partners. Due to war in Ukraine, SpaceX has updated its software to use less energy. Starlink is now powered by a car cigarette lighter. Starlink is supporting our key infrastructures, health facilities, financial institutions, energy plants. It has restored mobile connections in deoccupied Ukrainian towns and villages. Internet connection and mobile service are already available in Bordanka, Irpin, and Bucha. With just one Starlink station, the service was instantly re-established in five villages. Every day in Ukraine, about 150,000 people are actively using Starlink. Additionally, Ukrainian engineers are working hard during martial law every day. They risk their lives to restore connections, repair cables, and tower functions. Even in wartime, Ukraine stays always online. Ukraine has got the unique experience of using technologies during the war. Another creative and efficient way to fight back is the world's first IT army. Now there are about 250,000 participants. IT Army of Ukraine brings together both Ukrainian and international IT professionals. All cyber soldiers joined on a voluntary basis. The war of the 21st century has turned into the first cyber war. Software engineers of Ukraine and the rest of the world have united into a great IT army. Their main goal is to spread the truth about the war. They created a telegram channel to coordinate reports and instructions. On a weekly basis, IT Army attacks about 200 websites. During the first three days of its existence, the IT Army have shut down a number of critical government websites. After all independent media outlets were shut down, only propaganda media and TV channels remained in Russia. The most important of them is RuTube. The IT Army took down all of the propaganda TV channels in Russia and aired a single truthful broadcast about war in the Ukraine. On May 9th, the most important military holiday in Russia, live broadcasting was hacked and showed messages about war instead of program descriptions. On that day, RuTube was also shut down. Dozens of petabytes of information were deleted and the internal system was hacked as well. The IT Army informs Russian mothers about their sons who lost their lives on the battlefield. Artificial intelligence recognizes the faces of abandoned Russian soldiers and finds their social media accounts. The Army searches for relatives and notifies them of their death. We know names of all the looters. The IT Army obtained databases of postal services they used to ship stolen goods from Belarus to Russia. Ukraine is showing the whole world that in the 21st century, the truth cannot be destroyed. Donations this year were also digitized and made simple 
convenient and fast. We have initiated the first state crypto fund. You can donate in any cryptocurrency or NFT. It has already raised over $60 million in crypto. All funds go to military and humanitarian relief efforts. That is something the world hasn't seen before. We are not afraid of crypto and having fun. Just look at that. So you wake up once and catch a thought. Where should invest to some of my crypto? It's not that easy. It's pretty hard. Cause you are special. You are not a regular guy, right? Probably wine. Pardon, Chateau Grando. Just a few bottles made in 19 something zero. Or an alpaca farm. Alpaca's cute and fun. But you we now are probably done. Invest in peace, bro. That's what we hope. Invest in peace, bro. It feels so good. Invest in peace, bro. That's what we hope. Invest in peace, bro. It feels so good. Ukraine will win. It's only a matter of time. The future is digital, and future belongs to us. After the war, we see Ukraine as digital state of the future. For that, we need reform of the state governments, with significant reduction in civil servant and government agencies. Paperless, cashless, IT sector has 40% of GDP, the best tax regime in the world, the fastest customs. Ukraine is the largest IT hub in Eastern Europe with the highest GDP growth rates, Indust industrial parks and its own Silicon Valley with a focus on security solutions. The government works like an IT company, fast decision-making process and flexibility. This is what we strive for. Ukraine needs your support as only together we can win the peaceful future for the whole world. Thank you for your attention and interest in Ukraine. Slava Ukraine!